Thank you. Um, today I'll be talking about forking it right. Um, if you don't know what a fork is, don't worry. We will explain these things. If you've never touched a bit of code in your life, don't worry. We will uh, you know, review everything. If you're a developer, we'll also have some great stuff for you here. Um, welcome to WordCamp Los Angeles. Uh, it's one of my favorite WordCamps. I, you know, I love it. When I, when I uh, heard I was speaking first thing in the morning, I made sure I loaded up on a bunch of coffee. So you know, if you guys haven't, it's right over there in the corner. Um, lots of great things. I have a lot of great slides to show you. Again, I'll be talking about forking it right, what goes into forking it, why you should fork, how you should fork. Check. Hello. Yeah. Much better, right? Yeah. Excellent. So um, let's jump right into it. Um, this is a picture of WordPress before WordPress was even a thing. I, this screenshot, actually, it's still online right now. Who's heard of a B2 Cafe Log here before? Yeah? OK. Well, some hands. Essentially, in 2003, Matt Mullenweg and Mike Little forked a little known, uh, well, largely known as abandonware called B2 Cafe Log and created WordPress. Here's the first uh, version of WordPress.org. Quite nice, right? We've gone a long way since then. Here is a, the first version of WordPress installed. Again, the, the screenshot's a little small, but you can see you know, we, we have the links in the right-hand side menu, um, basically a web blog set up for you. Um, others soon joined Mullenweg and Little, including the originator of B2, uh, Mikel Valdrighi, I believe is that how you say his last name? He's a, a French man, I believe. And the project quickly took off, and the rest is history. Um, here's a quick uh, stat I pulled. Uh, this is recent from this year. It, can show you, it shows you basically the content management system usage for all the websites on the internet. Kind of looks like a P symbol, but on the right side, you see that large blue chunk there? That's WordPress. The gray side over here is other. So that means um, I developed a CMS maybe in 2004 and I put a client on it. That's other. Um, lots of different other CMSs out there. Um, you see that's around 40% too. This large jumbling here, um, the black one is Adobe. The, uh, there's also Joomla in there. And all the words are kind of mashed up. But you can see there's a large um, battle over here in the bottom left quadrant. And then the green side is Drupal. Who's heard of Drupal before? OK, lo lots of people. So you can see WordPress is positioned very well. Um, in the content management system usage on the internet. And essentially, WordPress is an achievement of the open source philosophy, and it showcases forking code right. So a couple more interesting statistics. Nearly 75 million websites depend on WordPress. That's a huge number of websites. It's growing every single day. I'm sure you guys have heard the stat that like 23%, 20, nearly 25% of the internet is running WordPress. That's a huge number of uh, websites. 48% of Technorati's top 100 blogs, like Wired.com, um, I think Time.com still using WordPress, are using WordPress. So it's not just the little guys that are using WordPress. It's some really big, major players out there. 56 language translations of WordPress really has helped WordPress grow in the international market. Um, in, in Japan, it's, it's really becoming very popular. In San Francisco this year, lots of uh, Japanese people flew over and uh, came to that. I'm sure you'll see the same at WordCamp uh, US this year. Um, again, these are complete translations. WordPress is an, actually partially translated in more than 120 different languages. So that's a very large number. Finally, WordPress is most popular with business websites. It's not just a blogging platform anymore. If somebody says, oh, WordPress, is that that blogging thing that people use? No, it's not. It's a content management system now. It's not just a blogging platform. We need to make people not say that anymore. Um, so here's an overview of what we'll be talking today, about today. What is open source and the free software movement? What is a fork? How do you fork? And then how do you contribute via a fork? And finally, we'll go into you know, right versus wrong, ethical versus unethical forking. So the open source philosophy. Um, who, who's familiar with the open source philosophy? Lots of people, right? Great. Open source software is software that can be changed, used, 
freely shared and modified by anyone. It's great, lots of freedoms, right? You can do a lot of things with open source software. There are many open source licenses. Here's a number of them. Um, MIT license is very popular. Um, Mozilla has their own license, um, as well as the uh, GPL, which I'm sure a lot of people have heard of. The license under which WordPress is released is called GPL version 2 or later, and that is by the Free Software Foundation, and a copy of every single license is included in every single one of your WordPress installs, unless you have a plugin that removes it, which there are a couple. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it's, I think it's called license.txt, and it's in the root of the WordPress install. Um, so little, every license is within WordPress. So what is the free software movement? Essentially, the free software movement outlines a number of freedoms that you have when interacting with these uh, open source projects. The first freedom, and I like how it starts at zero, because that's what programming is do, right? The freedom to run program for any purpose. There's no rules around the purpose of running the software. You have the freedom to study how the code works, which is great with Word, WordPress and in the open source industry. You can really hone in on your developer skills um, and change it to make it do what you wish. If, if it's not doing something and you want it to do another and maybe you have some developer chops, you can really just go in there and do what you want. Freedom number two is the freedom to redistribute copies so you can help your neighbor. So if you want a WordPress, you want a WordPress, you can, you can have a WordPress. Um, as well, you have the freedom to distribute copies, modified copies, to your friends and others, anybody that you want. So if you want to change WordPress, um, who remembers, uh, well, Ghost is still around, right? That, uh, they, uh, it's not an exact fork. I don't even think they forked WordPress, but they were talking about it originally, and basically, they saw that it was becoming a CMS, right? And they said, no, we want WordPress to be, or we want our own blogging platform. So they looked into forking it, and it was perfectly within their, their rights to do so. So we've been talking about a fork a lot. I think we should probably define what is a fork so everybody's on the same page here. In software engineering, or web development, a project fork happens when developers take a copy of source code from one software package, plug in, uh, theme, and start independent development on it, creating a distinct and separate piece of software. I bolded those words because they're, those are pretty key words, I think. Um, so that's the technical definition of it, but essentially you're going to take a, a plugin or a theme, which is openly available, and you're going to make a copy of that, a fork, and then you can code and do whatever you wish with it. If you want to contribute back, you can do that, and we'll talk about that shortly in a moment. So, so how essentially do you fork? Um, forking is really easy. It's not that difficult to do. Um, who's heard of GitHub before? GitHub, excellent, lots of people. It is probably the most popular um, online source control uh, repository, I guess you'd say, company. Um, there's something like 30 million re repos or something last I checked. Here's a public repo of the Giv plugin which you can see in the top right hand corner, there's a little button called fork, and it says a little fork icon. When you click that button, it'll create a fork in your account. Who's heard of Bitbucket? It's the second most popular. Bitbucket's pretty great. The fork button is in the left. This is a public repo as well. Personally, I use uh, GitHub, but Bitbucket's just as well. So forking on GitHub and Bitbucket creates a copy of the fork in your repository. You need an account to do this, I believe. You can, uh, fork is the first step to contributing back. So for instance, I submit pull requests. They're called to uh, WooCommerce and Easy Digital Downloads. One of my most recent ones was I added a button that allows you to refresh your stats for um, when you're you're, when you're checking out your sales. If you want to refresh it, you click the button and you see updated stats. And then essentially, I, I coded on that on my fork. I pushed it back to uh, the EDD repo and I said, look at my changes here in my fork. Check it out. And it shows you all the files you've changed. And, and if he likes it, you know, he can merge that into his project. So it's the first step to giving back. As well, you have the ability to sync with uh, the upstream forked repository. So if I forked WooCommerce, 
and they've got like 30 developers coding on it every single day, my repo is going to get pretty stale after a while, right? If I want to say, hey, go to that upstream repository and pull down the latest uh, results or the latest code changes, I can do that. And I can also merge that within my changes that I've made myself. Any questions so far? No? Good? Must be doing well. All right, so public versus private repos. All those repos we just saw were public. Anybody with an internet connection can go on there, access the code. F they're typically open source. I don't know why you'd want to put proprietary code on an on a open repository. That really doesn't make sense at all. Um, pr public repos can be forked and downloaded by anyone. Private repos are not free, and they restrict public access. I'm talking about GitHub and Bitbucket. You can get free private repos, but on GitHub and Bitbucket, they make you pay for it. But that's the way you can kind of protect your uh, code a bit. Bitbucket is uh, free. Well, thank you. All right. That's the difference between those two. Okay. Bitbucket's free. That's cool. How do they make money? What's that? Until you have 10 team members. Okay. Up till 10 team members. Okay. Good to know. You see I'm a GitHub user, right? Yeah. Um, so interacting with your uh, Git repos, you need something called a client. Basically allows you to interact with your code. If you're coding locally with a software like Desktop Server, who's a sponsor here, and I, I use it, it's great, or something called VVV, which is uh, another developer-centric local development environment. You need a Git client, basically allows you to do different commands, fork, clone, stash, merge, there's a lot more. Um, they're typically command line based or GUI based. Um, you, they're free and premium products for both Mac and Windows. And most IDDs now have them built in. I use PHP Storm, has it built right in, works pretty well. And then Sublime Text has some packages as well. Source Tree is my favorite, that's what I use every day. Um, it's freely available by the folks behind Bitbucket, and it's very good uh, software. For the Mac users, I heard uh, Tower 2 is really good. You can see I have a PC, so I'm uh, not able to use that, but I've heard good things on it. Um, so why should you fork? Um, my number one reason is it saves development time. Listen, we, at my company in San Diego, we don't have VC money. We can't hire a ton of uh, developers to help us out and you know code uh, thousands and thousands of hours of uh, a plugin from scratch. We're in the open source community, we're a bootstrap company, and we need to save time wherever we can. And so forking really allows you to do that. As well, you can leverage the proven code bases. So these code bases have been out and tested and used for a long time. They've been beat up, they've been fixed. Sure, there's probably bugs, every software has bugs, but you're gonna run into that, but you're saving tons of time. Forking is the first step to contributing back. So if you want to contribute back to WooCommerce, Easy Digital Downloads, Yoast SEO, some of these popular plugins, you have a good idea, maybe there's a typo, you can fix that via fork and what is called a pull request. As well, um, it improves your own development. You can look at the code, change it, break it, fix it. The, the only way I learned how to develop is by breaking stuff and putting it back together. And it really, really helps you a lot when you can see other people's uh, code and, and then see how you can kind of mimic that in your own uh, development. So what can I fork? Essentially, free and open source software can be legally forked without any prior permissions at all. You don't even ask the people. You can just fork it, you know? It's, that's what... That's what the, uh, the rules say. Um, but there are some ethical questions. What's right, what's wrong? What's ethical ver forking versus unethical forking? And we created the Give plugin off a number of forks, and I think it's, we did it right, and I'll tell you why in a second here. You should always fork wisely. With great freedom comes great responsibility. There are literally thousands of plugins for WordPress that begin as forks. And right versus wrong, uh, ethical versus unethical is largely a matter of opinion and not the law. I'm going to talk about a couple of plugins now. And disclaimer is I'm not the GPL uh, lawyer or I'm not the GPL police, WordPress police here. What I know is right or wrong. 
I think many of you are, will agree with me, and I'll tell you the stories of a couple of different real life projects. So, Fork and Write, who's used a plugin called CForms2? Has anybody used this plugin? Couple people. Ages ago, right? So, this came out probably before, well, it definitely came out before Gravity Forms and a lot of these uh, form drag and drop creation plugins like uh, Caldera Forms and Gravity Forms, uh, Formidable. Um, this is what a lot of people used before that. When I first got into WordPress, this was the go to solution. Um, essentially, in C Forms 2, uh, was stale. The original plugin developer is like a food blogger or something. And he said, you know what? There's an exploit that was found in it. He said, it's time to make this project. Let's just, it's, it's done, it's over with, move on. But the problem with this were thousands and thousands of active, active installs with this plugin installed. So many of these people had tens, hundreds of forms set up. So migrating for these new users was difficult, and he kind of left them high and dry. Um, you can see his explanation right here. He says basically, there was a PHP injection attack, which I think took blah, 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 I gave up. Uh, it's time this project is dead, basically. <laughs> Signs his name at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Oliver. Um, so what happened? Some developers who were using this plugin said, you know what? His all these active installs, this guy's not interested. Let's take over this project. Let's put it on WordPress.org. And let's give these folks a lifeline. Um, they fix the security issue. And essentially, they breathe new life into a plugin that the ori original author abandoned. It was abandonware. Uh, lots of people were getting hacked. And they really had no uh, lifeline. Again, they patch the security issue. And on top of that, they're providing free support on WordPress.org. If you go on WordPress.org, search CForms2 in the plugin section, you'll see that they have been updating the plugin, they have been supporting the plugin, and they've been doing their great community feedback. Um, as well, they're helping WordPress users dependent on CForms2. Let's talk about the unethical side. Who's heard of these GPL club sites before? Great, I'm really glad nobody's heard of them. Uh, essentially, what these plug these websites do are they will resell others premium products for a, a huge markdown like 95% off on that previous slide let me go back it says like WooCommerce plugins 95% off worth over $3,000 great so they're they're basically reselling others premium products near zero effort involved uh, they're confusing new WordPress users so if I don't know the difference between WooCommerce and this shiny website I'm gonna go spend less on this website and get all the plugins rather than one you know, recurring uh, add-on for $150. That sounds expensive to me, right? They're hurting actual plugin developers. They're eating their lunch. It's not good. They're taking. They're not giving. And guess what? They're offering zero support. Most times, they're based out of country. Uh, the, the plugin authors will go after them, but they'll get uh, either the host will shut them down, they'll jump to a different host, and they'll ping pong around. It's like chasing a ghost around. It's not, not fun. Uh, so that's an example of an unethical usage of GPL code. Again, they're, it's actually legal, but... Um, but if it's paid, is it still open source? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is it part of WordPress? Um, because the license that the code is under is GPL. Extended that's correct. To your exactly. So they're selling licenses and support, essentially. And there's some caveats to that, but... Seven. Yeah. Is this also illegal because of copyright and trademarks that they are using? Potentially, yes. I didn't see any WooCommerce logos. They usually don't put the WooCommerce or whatever it is. Um, OK, so I just real quickly want to give you the story of Give. Give is a fork of several different plugins. Um, we've created what we think is the go-to uh, solution for donations using this. And we developed it in six months. How did we do that? Boom, right here. Uh, well, Oh, sorry, it's a little slow. You can see that our engine is based on easy digital downloads. I know Pippin Williamson. I know his code. He writes excellent code. I've contributed multiple times to re his uh, product. We work together closely every day. I took easy digital downloads. I stripped out everything I didn't like. I kept everything I liked. And, I, and, and, and it basically runs the backbone of Give. One of the things I didn't like was he added all his um, 
every single field was within his own API. I said, we have things called CMB2 now by Web Dev Studios that is a custom field uh, plugin which makes it really easy to make fields on the fly. Let's use that instead. As well, I took the templating system from WooCommerce, I took some CSS form styles from Gravity Forms, a couple things from Yoast, and we're using Magnific Popup. There's a couple of different other ones that I want to put on here, um, but I didn't have the screen space. But let me underscore that we spent six months development and are continuing development every single day iterating on this project of our own hard-earned uh, time, money, and code that goes into making give what it is today. So we're not just exact forking it. Yep, Jim. You don't look this way. Oh, sorry. I'm paying too much attention to that side. What's up, Jim? When you do these uh, code Forks. Mm -hmm. Do you give acknowledgement to those other companies somewhere in your subline? I think this is on the next slide right here, but yes, definitely. <laughs> so why is Give ethical? So we're not competing with Easy Digital Downloads. I'm not like, hey, this is better Easy Digital Downloads. Uh, we pivoted and we're in a completely different um, underserved market of WordPress. We continue to contribute back to these fork repositories. <laughs> Large amounts of custom development done on top of it. And the core plugin is always going to be free. We are not charging for give, um, just the add-ons. Um, as well, we do give credit on our website and within our readmes on both GitHub and on WordPress with backlinks to the various people. And on our givewp.com site, um, we have a whole section for who's contributed and who we've, uh, we've leveraged code from. Um, who's heard of? Bloom before. Anybody? It's from Elegant Themes. It's a lead capture plugin similar to Optin Monster. It's very popular. Um, essentially, this plugin was forked recently by a very popular company. And all they did was change the logo and a couple items and, um, and released it on WordPress.org. It's called Rapidology. Um, so why is this unethical? Basically, this is, was a premium product. They said, hey, it's GPL, right? Let's just fork it change a couple things around. And what did they do? Uh, they, they said, you can use it. It's free, but give us your emails first. They gated the plugin with an email lead capture, which is never a good idea. Made a lot of WordPress folks upset. They largely rebranded it with zero effort to change any code. They marketed the campaign, or they built this huge marketing campaign around it, a very flashy website with a video. You wouldn't even know this thing was give, or I mean, uh, Bloom before. And they said, here's a free gift from lead pages. Kind of uh, shady, for, in my opinion. And then it was just used as another funnel to their very expensive paid product. Um, and, and what happened? It got taken down within a couple of days on WordPress.org. Mika Epstein, who is one of the gatekeepers there, um, released a blog post about a week later. Again, this is not specifically talking about Bloom, but she's just reiterating some of the, um, the, uh, the I guess, the reasons why they choose not to have uh, exact forks on the repo. Essentially, she says, um, we do not allow direct copies of other plugins to be relisted under somebody else's name. We allow change forks. So there was no change here besides a little you know, aesthetic things, and that's why it was removed. So here's a couple tips for forking it right. If the project seems abandoned, try talking to the author and seeing if you can adopt it first, rather than not talking to him and just making a duplicate. And perhaps you can gain his user base and contribute back and help some people out. Make sure you don't violate trademarks or copyrights. So somebody over here asked that, and I think that's an important thing to do. A lot of these companies, the larger ones, have trademarks on their brands. And you need to be aware of those things, because you could be violating some laws with that. Give the project a unique name so it's not confused with original. I've seen a lot of near exact forks on the WordPress.org uh, repository. There's like user login, that's the original one. User login with SSL, that's the forked one. User login with SSL and reCAPTCHA. Then there's another one, user login, all that, and then Ajax. Um, so that's very confusing for a lot of folks, and they're not sure which one's best, which one's supported. Um, give it a new name. Credit the original author within the code and documentation. Right, Jim? Smart idea. Make sure your new work is released under the GPL license. If you're forking uh, several different repos, saving a lot of time, getting a lot of uh, good stuff out of that, and then you 
release it proprietary or and then it's under encryption and nobody can see it it's not a very good thing so it's always wise to uh, keep it under the GPL um, you know it's just in the spirit of WordPress and talking about the spirit of WordPress I think a lot of people here understand it but always remember the spirit that you know we all hear we're all helping each other out and that's the the thing with WordPress you know we're here listening, everybody's attending WordCamp, and, and really, uh, it's about giving, not taking. Um, we have a lot of additional reading. My slides are online at uh, slides.com if you just search Devin Walker. Again, there's lots of stuff that's been written about this. Halfelf.org has a some, couple great articles. WP Tavern, who reads WP Tavern here? It's the best WordPress news site there is. So if you don't know about WP Tavern, check it out, great website. Uh, WP Mirror is a great one. They have another um, really good example of, uh, of a couple plugins that have uh, GPL abuse. My name is Devin Walker. You can find me on Twitter at Interwebs. I run a company called WordPress, or Word Impress, excuse me. <laughs> Not WordPress. I think Adam had that messed up earlier. But um, we're also the uh, WordPress community consultants for Media Temple, and our flagship plugin is called Give. Thank you very much. I think we have time for questions. Yeah, five minutes. Cool. Any questions on that? Yeah. Why don't you tell us what Give is? Give is a donation plugin. It essentially allows you to create numerous donation forms on your website and embed them. Um, you can have robust reporting. We're coming out with a, a recurring donations add-on shortly, so you can have uh, customized uh, annual subscriptions, monthly, weekly, and it's very flexible. We have a, a large amount of documentation on givewp.com, some videos, get you up to speed with it. As well, we're sponsoring. If you want a shirt, you can get a shirt too. Yeah? Is there any way you could roll back the slides, the one with the links in your Twitter? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. How's that one? It's a little small, sorry. What's your Twitter? At, at interwebs. interwebs. Where's that? Oh, sorry. I should be looking at this one. There it is. Yeah, interwebs was taken, so I had to get interwebs. <laughs> and then the thing with all the links. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where'd that go? OK, there it is. Oh, slides.com, search Devin Walker. It's like my most recent presentation. Yep. Uh, so regarding the giving credit in your readme's and whatever, if you submit a plugin to the repo, I'm pretty sure that they will reject it if you for and you're not giving proper credit. Ah. So if they discover you've been for, the thing is it's kind of hard for them to do that. They let Bloom through, right? They do their best, yeah. right? But I think something like 70 plugins are submitted per day. So it's a lot of code to review. And uh, a lot of times if you have a problem, email plugins at wordpress.org. They are great folks. Yeah, Manny. Devin, how do, you, how do you know that your change can merge with their change whenever you said you want to contribute to their the original. Um, usually with your, your source tree or whatever Git client you're using, it'll show you if there is a conflict, and then you can launch an external merging tool, which will basically show you right side, left side, which side you want to take. You want to take mine, you want to take theirs. What do you use for, for that? Um, I, I'm not sure the name of it. I just click it and it opens and it works. <laughs> <laughs> Any other more questions? Sorry, this side. I love this side. Yeah. <laughs> Jim. Devin, why did you create the Git plugin? So I created the Give plugin based out of a need. We work with a lot of nonprofits. We were using WooCommerce before, which kind of you're forcing donations down it. They don't need a cart system. They don't need a lot of this robust physical product stuff that, that WooCommerce offers. Um, we love WooCommerce, by the way. Don't get, get, don't get me wrong on that. Um, as well, um, we really built a lot of specific things in to give that donations need or that nonprofits need, uh, such as um, offline giving built in right out of the box and uh, a lot of other great features. So it was born from a need out of a pain that we had working with multiple uh, nonprofits. And people really like it. <laughs> Any more questions? Excellent. Enjoy WordCamp, you guys.